Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, so uh, <laughs> now the technical issues I, I hope are resolved for now. Um, chapter two, the literature review, uh, statistic solutions. All right. Okay, this is what we're going to be covering today. Um, again, I don't know if everybody heard me before. Um, everybody's going to get a copy of the presentation. Uh, we have a support person on the line who can answer your kind of technical questions and uh, questions like that. Um, if you do have content questions, you can type them in for me, but I'll get to them at the end. Okay, um, the chapter two or the, the literature, typically the literature review. Um, these are the standard components. Um, I always tell people to get, obtain a copy of their school's template if they have one, um, because while there are general features uh, that are common, literature reviews and all the other sections of the dissertation, um, sometimes schools will have particulars. Um, it may involve different sections or it may involve the names of sections or it may involve the organization of sections. Um, so always, always get your school's template if you have it. And they always like, and the schools like to change them on you. They like to update your templates and say, you now you have to use the newest one. So keep aware of that as well. Although this will act again as a, as a good general uh, type of template. Okay, um, so the introduction, like any introduction, um, you just want to orient your reader, right? So uh, a good place to start is to restate the purpose of your study. Just remind the reader of why your study is needed, importance of it, uh, and you can preview contents section of the chapter. Um, usually there's some kind of literature search strategy uh, section that doesn't need to be long. But the purpose of this section is to uh, you have birds. <laughs> they should. They're there are a couple rooms away, so I'm surprised that uh, they can be heard. Um, I hope they're not too distracting. The literature search strategy section. Uh, it's a small section, but it's it's important to let your reader know and your professors know that. Um, You've conducted a fairly comprehensive search for material uh, on your topic. So you can make you know, claims about the research, make claims about the topic based on the research. Uh, and there's not things that are kind of escaping uh, the net that you cast. Uh, and usually um, schools typically want you to stick to more recent research. Some schools don't. It, it doesn't matter to them, you can use um, old research. Um, but typically schools want to require newer research. And ideally you should mostly stick with newer research in the sense that you want to give, um, you know, a snapshot, a current snapshot of the research, right? So if something happened 20 years ago uh, in research, it likely, unless there's some reason that it's still relevant, it's likely not going to be relevant. Um, so usually want to stick to uh, more recent research. Some schools have um, exact parameters, like five years. They want you to stick to research. It's five years old, five to 10 years, seven to 10 years. Um, so what you do in this section is um, just briefly describe your search uh, for relevant material. Uh, you, know, you, can, you can say it usually involves listing databases, scholar, academic search complete, academic search premier. Still having a good time? Yeah, there has to be internet. Uh, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's a mic or connection issue. Hold on. I'm going to just. Okay, I'm using the built-in mic for the, from the computer. Can people hear me? Okay, all right. This is just the, the, the computer's mic, not that the headphone mic. Okay, great. Um, literature search strategy. Um, <clears throat> it's just to uh, show your reader, your professors, uh, that you've conducted a comprehensive search. So you usually want to list... Um, uh, you know, the databases you use, the search tools you use, usually you're probably going to go um, use your library's online portal, access, you know, these databases through your library's online portal. You can say that. Um, list the search tools, some of the databases, you know, some of the big ones are Google Scholar, Academic Search Complete, Academic Search Premier. Um, they just want to see that you've searched some of the pertinent um, databases and use some of the relevant search tools. If you had to search anything specialized, any specialized journals um, that that were particularly relevant or that your chair asked you to search, you know, list those. Um, it's also uh, pretty standard that you should include your search terms in any. Um, yeah, the birds are, I can't do anything about the birds. <laughs> um, sorry, <clears throat> I'll try to, maybe I can put them in another room next time. I'll keep that in mind. Um, I didn't just, I didn't know they were that loud. Um, okay, uh, you wanna include your search terms or in the combinations of search terms that you used. Um, and usually these are, these are um, just your, your factors, your variables, the major concepts that your study is um, focused on. Let me go just a minute. Okay, I'm back. Maybe the birds are a little less distracting now. Um, okay, include your search terms. And again, these, are, these aren't going to be anything new or surprising. I and mean, they're going to be your, your factors that you're studying, your major concepts, any theories that you're using. Um, and you want to mention any way that you qualified your search. So, uh, you know, if you searched only English language articles, you want to say that full text. Um, if you needed to for your school, again, some of them require newer research, 
Um, if you only searched um, articles that were published in 2015 and later, you'd want to say that or whatever the date happened to be. Uh, peer reviewed, if you only search things that were peer reviewed, you want to indicate that too. And that's usually pretty standard. Um, most of the material, if not all the material for your lit review is going to need to be peer reviewed. I mean, you can um, use books sometimes. You can use information from websites sparingly, but um, it's just for kind of contextual or background information, but most of the stuff you actually want to review should be peer reviewed studies. Um, so those qualifiers you want to, um, you want to mention as well in this uh, section. And also a good, a good thing to do is, you know, you can have uh, rubrics and you can have, um, you know, go to these webinars and get information about these sections, but always see if you can get a good example from your chair, from your school um, of what they want you to do or of an approved dissertation that's close to yours, because it, it really helps when you sit down to write it um, even though you know in your head all the things that this should contain when you see um, what somebody else has actually done and how they've got, actually handled it, uh, it, it helps. Uh, usually uh, a discussion of the theoretical framework or the theory comes after um, the literature search strategy. Again, follow your school's template. Not, not all schools want the theoretical framework in chapter two. Some of them want it in chapter one. Some want it, a mention of it in chapter one and an extended discussion of it in chapter two. So again, follow your framework. Uh, I'm sorry, your, your template. But um, if uh, you do need the theoretical framework in chapter two, um, you know, here, here's what you, you, it's, a, it's about kind of defining it, laying it out, laying out the components and having a little discussion of how it connects to your study. And sometimes they'll want some research in there thrown in to, to show that people are still using it and how people have, have used the theory. Um, <clears throat> so to start off, you know, obviously who developed the theory, um, have a source for that a year. Um, what did they do? develop the theory for, um, you know, to explain what, what did they, they obviously, that's what theories do, they explain things, they explain phenomenons, phenomenon. So what did they uh, develop the theory for? Um, define the theory. Sometimes people miss this. It's like a simple uh, kind of a, kind of a no brainer step, but sometimes people just forget it. Sometimes they think, they don't need to define it. Like, surely the professor knows what it means. Well, maybe, maybe not. But the point is you, you need to stop and define your theory and especially define it as you're going to be using it for your study. Uh, usually theories have um, components or dimensions to them. Define those if they're relevant to your study, the individual components. Uh, discuss a little bit what researchers have used the theory for. Um, not just the person who developed it, but researchers coming later, how they've used the theory, what they've used it for. Um, and then a little bit about this is more how it connects to your study, right? How the, the components of the theory, you know, relate or connect or inform uh, what you're studying. And just a word here, I do have a content question that came up, but again, content questions I'll, I'll get to at the end. Um, and just a real quick note here about conceptual framework versus theoretical framework. Um, I don't know if I'm going to give you a satisfactory answer about what the difference is, but what's really important to know is conceptual framework is typically associated with qualitative studies. Theoretical framework is typically associated with quantitative studies. Um, and that's usually because uh, quantitative studies use instruments or surveys or you know some kind of tool to gather information, survey tool. Um, and usually those have theoretical foundations. And so you, we can point to a specific theory. So if you're measuring, say, emotional intelligence, there's a specific theory of emotional intelligence. The tool is based on that theory. 
Um, so it's easy to say emotional intelligence will be my theoretical framework. Um, and a little caveat to that is, you know, there's different, theor there's different um, instruments to measure emotional intelligence, right? There's Goldman's instrument and there's Smith's instrument, but I'm making that one up. And there's also researcher C's instrument. Um, so however you are explaining emotional intelligence or defining it for your study, if you're using Goldman's um, definition of emotional intelligence, you want to use Goldman's um, instrument. So the instrument and the theory needs to match. So in other words, you don't want to use like Goldman's uh, definition and then use somebody else's instrument, okay? Because usually the components and the, of the, the definition of the theory and the elements of the uh, questionnaire or the survey match. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> and then a conceptual framework for qualitative study. Um, sometimes you can't find a, a theory that just, nice and tidily kind of connects. So you have to kind of bring in uh, a concept here and a concept there and kind of stitch those together to make your framework. So that's kind of in broad strokes, the difference between conceptual and a, a theoretical framework. Uh, then the actual review of the literature is the next section. And it is really the meat of the, um, the chapter two. I mean, this is where all the work is. This is where all the um, all the work is. Uh, you know, the, the kind of the synthesis of ideas, the making the case for you know why your study is needed, and um, in the, in the large picture, that's what the the lit review does. It not only kind of reviews the information that's on your topic, right, to see what people have done. It also, you should include in there, um, you know, analysis of the studies. You know, what are some of the shortcomings? What, what have people focused on trends? What haven't they focused on? And so the ultimate kind of goal of the lit review is to show that there's research needed on what you're doing. Here's what people have done. However, they've approached it in this way or they focused on these things and they haven't approached it like I'm doing and they haven't um, looked at the things that I'm looking at. So you want to keep that in mind as you as you kind of shape your lit review that you are you are leading to your essentially to um, the need for your research questions. <clears throat> so how to structure the, the review of the literature? I mean, it, it should be really follow your major concepts or your factors or your variables that you're studying, right? Um, use headers based on your factors, based on your, your variables to organize the sections. And within those, you could even have subheaders. And that's kind of based on what's in the literature. So you're gonna find topics or themes in the literature. Um, so you want to kind of group and organize material um, from these studies based on certain themes or certain topics that come out. Uh, okay, and then people sometimes struggle with they get the, you know, they're, they're supposed to review and look at the literature, look at the studies, pull out relevant information from the studies, which includes, you know, what was the purpose of the study? What kind of study was it? Was it qualitative? Was it quantitative? How did they um, analyze data? What did they find? All right, but then part of it too is how does what they found, these researchers found, how, how does it connect to what these other researchers found, right? And then yet somebody else conducted a study on the same topic and found something else. So part of it is kind of putting these things into conversation to seeing how they kind of relate to one another. Okay, yeah, and here's, here's what I mean by synthesis, which synthesis generally means, you know, combining things to make a whole. Um, so you want to combine information from studies Again, um, you know, relevant information, purpose, type of study, what they find, the findings um, to help make points. And synthesizing material at the paragraph level um, is, is, is probably the primary place where people get in trouble. Their, their, their paragraphs just kind of fall apart, like they, they don't have a topic and they don't support the topic. Um, 
And so this is where we kind of go back to, um, you know, early days when we learned about writing a, a tight paragraph, um, which is you have a topic um, and then you have um, in the middle of the paragraph, you have evidence or discussion of the topic, you know, il illustrating uh, what you're talking about or giving examples of what you're talking about. Um, and then a summary sentence that concludes or you know makes the point or, you know or leads to the next topic. So let's look at um, this would just be an example of a of just kind of a general paragraph. Um, and again, yeah, I know some of this for some of you might be kind of going back, but um, it helps to just kind of be reminded of the fundamentals of, of organizations at paragraph level because lit reviews. They're tough because they involve a lot of information and you have to kind of synthesize and present a lot of information. Um, so it's good to have the kind of fundamentals down. So you have the topic sentence, right? You would have the evidence or the discussion or the examples supporting the topic sentence. Um, and at a conclusion, a summary statement or ideally a transition to the next paragraph. Uh, and when you're doing this for your lit reviews, this would also include um, material from the studies that, that I mentioned before, you know, the, the purpose of the studies, the findings, um, and sometimes how findings relate to one another. Smith found this, but Jones found this. So that therefore it tells us, you know, yet something else about the topic. Okay, uh, analysis, this is another part, synthesis, bringing the material together, analysis, which is kind of what I've been talking about. Um, so you're not just kind of reviewing the studies, you're also making comments about the, the worth of, uh, of the studies, and not necessarily the worth, but um, are there shortcomings? You know, are there, are there gaps in the research, which you want to note, because that helps highlight the need for your study if, if your study is designed to address those gaps. Um, any trends, you know, research goes in trends, you know, speaking of emotional intelligence, which was like a trend years and years ago, but you don't hear so much about it anymore. Um, so, you know, are the research trends, what, what seems to be what people are focusing on now? Again, that, that may or may not align with what you're doing. If it doesn't, you know, you want to, to note that and it, it may help actually make the case for your study. Um, and at the end, you know, you want to research, it all should be leading to reinforcing your research problem, the need for your study, and it culminating in, you know, an argument for conducting your study. And uh, the summary. Um, uh, and just like a summary of other sections, a recap the, the major points from the chapter, to remind the reader of the research problem, um, what's in the literature, what's not in the literature, um, and restate the need for your study. And again, just to, to remind you that um, it, the, the chapter two, the lit review, is, it's just, it's a long chapter. It's kind of difficult. Um, and that's just what it is. I mean, it, it, it's, <laughs> but it just, you know, with perseverance and work and working with your chair um, and working with an editor and a consultant, um, you can get through it. Uh, it's just, they're, they're one of the big challenges um, in, in the dissertation. And this is our uh, contact information. Um, sorry for all the, the kind of technical issues and the, <laughs> the wildlife issues. Um, but I think we got it straightened out. Um, any questions, uh, content related questions? Let me see if I can go back and um, I think I had one earlier. How do we verify that a source is peer reviewed? Um, that's a good question. Usually um, when you're searching for material, there, there will be an actual something that you click that says, you know, just give me peer reviewed material. And that should cover it. 
I mean, that doesn't confirm that the, the material is actually peer reviewed, but it all should be. If you do have a question or your chair wants you to confirm it, um, there, there is something called Ulrich's, that's U-L-R-I-C-H, apostrophe S, Ulrich's Guide to Periodicals. Um, and that should be able, you should be able to access that through your online library portal. That is a place where you can confirm um, whether or not articles are peer reviewed. Sometimes the, the websites, if you go to the websites of um, the journals, they will say right on it that whether they're peer reviewed or not. Um, so there's a couple of ways to check. To, um, but again, um, if you just kind of, if you click that feature uh, when you're searching, you should only get peer reviewed stuff. Okay, any other questions about the, the lit review? Can you use sources found in other journals? Um, I don't know what you mean by other journals. Um, if it's if it's their peer-reviewed journal, you're good. Um, if it's not peer-reviewed, probably you know you shouldn't you shouldn't use it. Any advice on how to broad or narrow a topic needs to be for a literature review? Okay, this is about um, broad, you know, how broad or how narrow a topic needs to be. I mean, the literature review needs to focus on what it needs to focus on. And, and by saying that, I don't mean to sound circular or cute, but um, what you're studying is what your literature review needs to be focused on. It needs to be focused on your factors, um, you, you know, the relationship between those factors, if it's, you know, it's like a correlational study um, and your major topics. Um, so let your, your research questions, your research problem, your purpose, let those guide you. That, that's what the focus of your literature you should be on and the, and the associated factors and ideas. Are there any resources to guide the literature reviewed so I don't miss anything? Um, yeah, your template. Um, if your school has a template, to follow the template, uh, your chair will keep you on track. Um, editors, consultants like us. Um, so yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is just to um, set some parameters. I mean, if, if again, if, if there's uh, some kind of requirement about the recency of sources, like they need to be within five years, I mean, that automatically, you know, helps you focus right there. So everything past that you don't have to, to really focus on. How do you narrow your topics? Um, again, that kind of goes back to what I said before, let your research question, let your purpose, let your research problem drive um, things and help you organize what's in the chapter two. Um, so sh they should be focused, you know, on what you're doing, you know, on, on actually um, not just the broader topic, but what you're, what you're specifically looking at within those topics. So if you're doing something on teachers, um, you know, you're not going to focus all research on teachers. It's going to be focused on what you, you are doing. Like if it's self-efficacy in teachers, then you're going to be focused on that. Okay, so it, it needs to be, it needs to align as closely as possible to what you're actually doing, what you're actually focusing on. It's not a kind of general discussion of the research. It's a discussion of the research on what you're doing specifically. How do I list uh, a source that's found within another source. So a study, for example, that lists several other studies, uh, can I use it as a source? And so uh, what's the correct way to cite that? Yeah, if you need to cite, um, so I, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're reading an article by Smith and Smith cites Jones and you really want the Jones thing but you don't have Jones's article. I mean, yeah, there's a way you, you look that up on APA seven, which it's easy to find on the web. Um, there's a way to just put 
quoted in, say you would you would put Jones and you would put quoted in Smith. Um, there's a way to do that. It, it's pretty easy. It's just like QTD for quoted, and you just set, you put quoted in whatever the the actual um, source is that the other source is embedded in. Can you walk us through one example of a good lit review with screen share? I get the core concepts to write one based on your slides today, but it's more concrete. Uh, in the future, maybe um, an actual example of a, I can't do that today, um, but we could definitely have that, uh, maybe consider that for the future, um, or at least part of one. And if we can you know, walk you through a complete lit review, but um, have one up just so you show you the sections. Um, we'll, we'll consider that, thank you. Any other any other questions? Do you include a historical overview of your topic, or only the results from other studies? That's a that's a good question. Um, one, it depends on your template. Uh, I've seen templates that want some historical background in the lit review. Uh, I've seen other ones that don't require it. Um, sometimes your topic might require it um, in the sense that, you know, to really understand the recent research, um, it's good to give a little historical background and a little context. Having said that, the focus of the lit review should be on results uh, and, and the, the details of recent research. Um, or again, if they're gonna let you use um, studies from uh, before, that, that's fine. So historical material in the lit review should be really kind of minimal. Um, again, if it's required, it's required. Um, if you need, think you need to add a little bit, that's fine, but I would keep it to a minimum. Okay, any, any, anything else? Questions? Let me see. Um, how long should a literature review section be? Literature review, how long should it be? Um, again, sometimes your schools will, your, will say, I mean, I'm working with people right now and their templates say the lit review has to be 30 pages. Uh, the lit review has to be 20. Um, I've seen schools have no, no page uh, count requirements. I've seen 10 page lit reviews. I've seen 80 page lit reviews. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's no hard and fast rule there, um, but it seems like the sweet spot for a lot of schools is about 25 to 30 pages. Okay. How can we reduce plagiarism or similarity of text in the literature review? Um, I mean, it just all starts when you know you're um, reviewing the material. Um, try to pull information out of the studies that's pertinent, like the purpose, the participants, um, what kind of study it was, the findings. Pull that out. Maybe put it in a grid or something. You know, have those those uh, something that organizes that information by those those components. And then, you know, try to stitch that together in your own words. Try to put the things in your own words. Try to get away from the language of the text as much as possible. So you're not relying, you're relying on the details from the studies, but not on the, the actual language uh, that the person is using in the studies. Um, that will help kind of reduce the similarity. What do you recommend on how to find good sources? Um, uh, you just, you know, go to the good, um, you know, the databases, academic, you have to go to an academic, um, you know, library or academic databases. Google Scholar is one. Um, 
but you also need the, the kind of databases that you can only really access through university libraries. And you know, if you're registered, um, you should have access to university library, your university library, the online portal. And once you're in the online portal, um, it should have access to a lot of the, 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 the best and most popular search tools and, and databases and search engines. At what point in the planning writing process would you suggest we contact your agency for assistance? Um, it, there's no real kind of, it, it kind of depends on how comfortable you feel, but usually we, we, we start working with people once they have a pretty firm foundation um, of, of what they wanna do and why and their direction with their chair. So in other words, we don't have to kind of, you know, we're a third party but we're happy to help you as much as we can. That's what we're here for. Um, but some of those fundamental decisions about here's what I'm going to do um, and here's why I'm doing it, you know, those things are set with your chair or, or you know, fairly set. I mean, obviously, they may need to be tweaked or, or kind of massage as you go along. But um, it's good to have those things kind of down. Um, and then we can come in and once we you know, realize what it is you're trying to achieve and, and how to go about it you know, we have a much better idea of how to help you. What is the difference between conceptual framework and theoretical framework? Uh, yeah, we did already cover it and I'm not going to cover it again only because you're gonna get a, um, a copy of the, of, of the presentation. So you can just go back to that, that part. Uh, what I really want to learn about is how to write a meta synthesis. Mm. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Um, there's a meta-analysis meta as a type of study, um, but we could do a whole different webinar on that. Anything else? Anyway, thank you for coming. So I learned two important points today. Close the door on the birds and don't use my mic on my headphones. So thank you for that. Thank you for attending. Um, have a good day. And again, you guys will, will get a, a copy of this. All right, thank you.